Welcome, welcome everyone. Joining me for this special sneak peek into Etel Australia is Adam Freeman. He's a Chief Brand and Communications Officer at Booktopia. Um, Adam will be contributing both his insights um, into the challenging landscape, uh, changing landscape of retail media in Australia, along with participating in a brand versus performance marketing debate, which is I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, in this discussion, we dive into both topics to give you a view into Adam's insight and experience on both sides, leading a very beloved Australian brand, Booktopia. Uh, as part of our program, and uh, my name is Juan from the MarTech Weekly, uh, we are actually offering 20% off uh, ticket prices. That's a saving up of up to $299 AUD with all of our TMW Pro Advantage packages. You can find that at Pro dot the martech weekly dot com uh, we'd love to see you there uh, we are really gearing up for etail australia happening from the 13th to the 15th of february in sydney so we'd love to see you there and you can also see adam's awesome content um, at the event uh, in sydney on the 13th to the 15th of february all right so adam over to you great to have you thanks for joining uh, me for this very special sneak peek into etail now, I want to start with your first topic about retail media. Of course, of course, it's been a buzzword over 2023. Uh, there's so many people talking about it. There's so many technology vendors thinking about how they get into retail media. Um, but what does it actually mean for a retailer like Booktopia? How are you approaching retail media and what does it actually mean for the brand? For us, retail media presents such a great opportunity. There are actually not too many brands doing that at scale in Australia yet. In the US and the UK, it's really taken off. In Australia, it's still relatively a small market, you know, led by, you know, a, a few of the big names, certainly Woolworths, um, you know, kick things off, um, you know, and, and Coles and, and Amazon have, have, have really kind of entered the fray. Um, beyond that, though, there's not too much in the, in the way of, of what retailers are doing. So for us, you know, uh, beyond the commercial opportunity, there is a way to um, connect with the, the philosophy, the central philosophy that we have, which is how do we add more value to our customers? So when customers come to us, they're buying books, but what are they getting beyond the books? So we want to create a fantastic book buying experience. And that doesn't end when they open up a box with their book delivery it should have other things and that could be anything from offers or experiences or curated content from relevant partners we don't we want to be discerning in a way that what we're serving up is relevant to our customers and what they actually want so what we've done so far is provided content um that with you know certain partner brands that does um align with what what customers are looking for so it's well, i guess books and something that provides that that genuine value exchange and um, we're constantly looking at you know uh, canvassing customer insights about what they want uh, looking at trends in the market um uh, and making sure that we're serving something that is meaningful and, and something that they can, uh, the customers can actually utilize and think, oh, okay, um, that's great. I got my books from Booktopia and I got this. Hmm. And do you think that uh, because retail um, media as a concept has been around for a long time, you know, there's always been advertisers putting placements within stores in the physical environment, but retail media has become way more popular now because of the digital capabilities in a lot of Australian e retail brands. But yeah. If you think about it, well, you've got Amazon and you've got Amazon here in Australia. You've got West Farmers, which have multiple brands. You've got Woolworths. You've got sort of a handful of companies that really have that scale and have that huge, literally almost the entire database of Australian consumers that the, the value proposition for e-commerce um, specific retail media is um, extremely valuable to them. But for a brand like Booktopia, where it, you're in a focused um, specific category, which is um, books and publishing, uh, how does it make sense? Are you guys thinking a lot about the online opportunity, um, even though you know it's not um, as something as prevalent or as a commodity such as groceries and and um, and you know uh, travel and things like that? I think the beauty of of having a single product focus means that we can be more focused mm -hmm. in the type of content and the type of uh, brand that we work with that is genuinely connected to books. So, for example, wine and books go really well. 
coffee and books go really well. They're, they're great categories. Yeah. You know, when you're reading a book in one hand, what can you have in the other? If you think about it, you know, <laughs> practically like that, there's an opportunity there. Um, but we're serving up things, you know, we, you know, books is very much within the health and wellbeing space as well so how do we make a nod uh to that you know we know that we're in an environment where you know we've got uh, a lot of people having pressure on their on their household budgets so that is something that's relevant to everyone uh right now in terms of being cognizant of of price price sensitivity in, in market and making sure people are budget conscious so how can we help people save money as well um so there are all these different factors that kind of play into the customer mindset and things that are relevant to you know, the core product that we sell in books. Um, and so that's where we're looking at things that are really complementary. Whereas, you know, we are the retailers, you know, I guess there's more category up with any category. And we, look, we could do that to an extent. We're still, books is for everyone and anyone, um, you know, mm -hmm. fundamentally, but we're just trying to make sure that we can be curated and leverage the fact that we do have this single focus for the benefit of our customers. Yeah, I think that's that's the value is that you can really carve out your own space. As you say, there's all these peripherals that sit around a book, as you know, literally a book in one hand and you got to have something else in the other. It may be a dessert or it may be, <laughs> as you say, anything a, is possible. A, a glass of wine, right? But uh, to your point, I like that sort of that original thinking around, well, this is how, how our products and our brand is relevant to consumers. What are the peripherals that could really plug into that to make the experience better for the customer as well? So I like that customer centricity and that thinking around how do you enhance the experience of a customer while um, being able to drive um, additional revenue from new sources. So um, I appreciate that. And that's a fantastic way of thinking about it. I want to switch into your second topic. So you're actually getting around ETL quite a bit, which is fun. And I can't wait to see you on stage, but you're participating in an Oxford style debate. Uh, so you'll be going head to head with some folks around performance versus brand-based marketing. Now, uh, the question is that, um, you know, if you only had a certain amount of dollars, where would you put it? You know, where would you put your last thousand dollars in your marketing budget? Would you put it in a brand efforts or performance marketing efforts? But I guess the, the topic pits those two things against each other, right? Almost as like a dichotomy. Um, do you think they're polar opposites or how do they work together in your point of view? They're definitely not polar opposites. I think the beauty of great marketing is when they do come together. And, you know, there's there's the classic 60-14 um, model in terms of putting 60% of your budget into brand and 40% of performance. The way I view it is you think about demand generation. Performance is very much your, we need that now. Um, and it's your existing demand, those that are in market for a certain product at a certain time, um, you know, and, and you're there to serve those people. Whereas brand is, is certainly fueling that future demand in terms of it's not there yet, uh, but you're also trying to create that demand potentially now uh, as well. Um, I think the interesting piece from a Booktopia standpoint is, you know, you open up the genuine interest in the category, but also you've got the um, interest of gifting, for example, which, you know, can apply to everyone. And that's more broad. And you also need a bit of a brand job to do that because that's not necessarily a performance piece. And that's where brand and performance can really come in in terms of opening up the occasions and reasons for being about why you should buy a product and why you should buy into a category fundamentally as well. Um, and so the two can confuse in, in some channels, particularly from a social media perspective, as a good example, you know, you can go through the funnel quite nicely there. That's what, you know, the purpose of a lot of, um, you know, social media is discovery. And so your rights, you know, slap bang in the middle of doing that brand piece, but also trying to push them down the funnel so they convert, um, you know, and, and think, okay, that's a great product. I'm going to shop that or I'm going to, Think about Booktopia as a destination, I'm going to shop there. You need the two to really come together. So it's very much thinking about what is the role of each channel? What is the role of the message? And then trying to bring the two together versus seeing them at polar ends where well, you can't have brand because you can't measure it, which is the usual uh, level that's put against it. But you can measure its performance, which is the advantage that it's got. Um, where you can balance that out and actually you know, uh, put, you know, a percentage into brand, a percentage into performance and just think about the the consumer and, you know, the thinking about the mindset and, and where they're going to be and why they're going to um, buy and when they're going to buy, it really starts to create a real dynamic model. I think there's something to that in that almost in the way that brand is a accelerator for performance marketing in the sense that you know, if you're building a strong brand, excellent communications, you're building that trust with consumers, you're creating that word of mouth, 
you're doing all of those things. And then you also got a layer of creativity and activations, whether it be out of home or in TVCs and those sort of bigger campaigns where you're driving just a lot of awareness. When it comes down to the practical, almost very tactical viewpoints of performance marketing, it's literally money in, money out. We're spending X amount of money on Facebook ads or campaigns. We're spending X amount of money on email marketing and et cetera, et cetera. All those performance marketing efforts can only be benefited from a strong brand and that developed awareness and that um, that relationship building with consumers over a long period of time. You know, I, I find that particularly with e-commerce and retail brands, they and you see this a lot with um, direct-to-consumer D2C, is that they go down the performance path and then you have platforms like Facebook and Google increasing their prices. And because they haven't spent a lot of time building their brand, they end up almost in a in a crisis because they're like, crap, all of our growth is coming from specific tactical channels that are driving revenue today. And we're not thinking about the future implications of building a, um, a well-loved brand, which Booktopia definitely is one of those brands that Aussies know and love. Um, yeah. So fascinating to think about how how those two things come in together. But, but what are your thoughts? You can't drive sustainable growth with no brand. Um mm -hmm. You need to have a strong brand and have a footprint for, for the mid to long term, um, fundamentally. Um, you know, you have to think revenue, which is obviously a short term piece versus ongoing profitability as well. You know, you talk about rice, you talk about the cost of acquisition. They're the key considerations. When you have a strong brand, it means you're going to generate ultimately more direct traffic that's coming through, which means there is less of a, uh, you know, pressure cooker effect on the delivery of, you know, performance performing ultimately mm. um and so having that brand and actually having the ability to say right well we need to take a longer term view here because you know this spend that we might have is not going to pay dividends tomorrow in terms of di generating direct sales but over the longer term it is because it's going to help us bring you know the cost of acquisition down and so that ultimately will have a and a positive effect on the profit on the longer term profitability, but it is you know it's it's obviously you want you want that short term impact. You you've got to create your commercial cost. So it is it is that fine balance. That's where the two of them that work together you know work well. And if you look at the top performing you know uh, you know brands across any category in the market, retail and beyond, um, they all have one thing in common: it's strong brands. Yes, and that's that's okay. key. Yeah. Less uh, licks, less uh, views and clicks and more hearts and minds, I think. Um, yep. <laughs> that might be the way of putting it. But uh, but Adam, um, thank you for joining me. This has been a fantastic sneak peek into your thinking and what you're bringing to eTail. But I want to ask you, I mean, we've got dozens of speakers over three fantastic days. We've got some of the smartest minds in the Australian eTail, uh, e-commerce and retail um, um, marketplace. Who? What are you looking forward to from the event? What I love about eTel is um, the diversity of opinions and the ability to unlock different categories uh, within retail and actually see, you know, the synergies, uh, the challenges that people face, um, the opportunities that are there that you might not have even thought about. Um, that's been great to see um, eTel previously. That's you know, it's great you you bring everyone together as a community, and, and I think that that's. That's really interesting. Um, you know, the trends, the patterns, um, new ideas, meeting meeting new people. That's what I'm e excited about. And I am just as excited as you are. I think it's going to be a fantastic um, series of days just focusing on e-commerce and retail. Just absolutely wonderful caliber of folks speaking. And as you say, a wonderful diversity of ideas as well. So catch us there on the 13th to the 15th of February in Sydney. And don't forget, there is 20% off tickets. That's a $300 savings if you come and join us at and buy a subscription at TMW Pro. So that's pro.themartechweekly.com. We'd love to see you there.